Hello, hello, everybody. I'm Evan Abrams. Welcome. Welcome to your first video challenge of the week here on Adobe Live. If you're watching us on YouTube, thank you so much. Please make sure you subscribe while you're here and come on over to Behance if you like. Be checking the chat in lots of places. Um, like I said, I'm Evan Abrams. I'm here to challenge you with some video projects. Uh, hopefully it's going to be a, a good one for you here. We're going to be starting it off with something a little bit simple. Green screening, chroma keying making backgrounds invisible. Um, backgrounds kind of like, hold on, I don't usually do prop work, but today we do. Um, nice. Here we go. I'll just move my plant out of the way. Green screen kind of like this one. So that's what we're gonna be working on today. Uh, we're doing it entirely in Premiere. And when you do the stuff, we want to see, we want to see what you're working on. We want to see what you do. So come and share it with us on Discord. Now, if you don't have a green screen in your office, don't worry. We've got footage, we've got assets for you down in the description. So grab a hold of those and follow along if you like. Good to see you, Umicord. Good to see you, <laughs> everyone in the Laura. Oh man, so many people, so many people starting the new year with us here. Holy moly. <laughs> Robert, Steve, and of course, our mods holding it down. <laughs> it's great to see people hanging out here. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's get into it. Let, let me show you what we're doing. So here in Premiere, let's look at some examples, all right? We've got, we've got uh, tech support here, hanging out in cyberspace, which is great. We've got uh, some playing video games. Perhaps I'm, I'm on a bit of a theme. And then uh, we're gonna have uh, this person <laughs> kind of uh, uh, bobbing back and forth with this wonderful digital cityscape in behind. So in order to do green screening, we wanna get, we wanna get the, the bare bones of stuff kind of together. <laughs> I, lo I love that devil <laughs> devil and it's not easy being green indeed so to illustrate some of that let me talk you through some of the kind of real life problems that you're going to have filming green screening filming footage for chroma keying because if we look at our subjects the subjects that i've prepared their green screens are great they've done a great job of lighting them evenly so it's a fairly even green tone over them we have a look at some of these other ones here. So there's a little bit of vignetting towards the outside and a little bit, a little bit of blooming around the inside. But as long as generally the greenness around your subject uh, in here is working out, that's going to be fine. Now, just to contrast with my office, the way things are in here, if you're filming your own green screen, I'll just step back. You can see these areas of shadow here. Those are going to complicate any kind of green screening going on. And pretend that I'm also doing the weather, perhaps. But really this is caused from uneven lighting on the screen. So you wanna have separate light bouncing up onto the screen. That may cause what's called spill, which would be the greenness of the screen bouncing off the, the back of your subject and you get kind of a green haloing back there. There's a lot of tips for getting your green screen chroma keying footage exactly the way you want. But the main thing is get the screen as far away from the subject as you can. Try to light it as evenly as possible and as illustrated by my wardrobe today, you want to avoid any colors that are common between the subject and the screen, right? So that's a very critical <laughs> bit of business there. So, you know, we've got some bright, vibrant colors on here, but no chromatic greens, right? The reason we tend to use green is because there's not a lot of this level of green in human pigment, right? But you might also find blue screen. You might also find the ultra rare pink screen. Uh, as long as these are primary colors, it's easy to separate them digitally. So what am I talking about separating digitally? Holy moly, put this away so it's not distracting us. And let's get into it. So we've got a subject and we're just gonna drag our subject out onto the new composition button. This might be somewhere in a longer composition for you, but let's isolate it so we can really, really dip in. And we wanna make sure that it is at least on video track two. So we're gonna get this guy. He's up on video track two. And uh, yeah, you can see, so Rick, you're saying here, you see this guy's headset here, right? We got these little slivers of green in here right? that could be complications. We're gonna see how well we do with them. So get your, get your subject, put them at least on video track two. Now we are going to enter into the effects tab over here. If you're a senior near my head, we're gonna come up to effects tab and here, let me just go ahead and, and stretch this up a little bit so that we can see it a little bit better. In effects, I want you to search for key, right? And you see, I've got a whole bunch of folders about this, but there are 
basically a big folder about keying. These are all the keying effects that we're going to be enjoying. Now, we've got uh, color key, we've got luma key, we've got track mat key, and we've got <laughs> ultra key. And we can tell by the name ultra key that it's probably the superlative key of these. Now, keying, I'm just going to drag. Actually, you know what? You know what? Let's let's start with color key, right? So we can really tell the difference. I'm going to drag color key out onto here. Now, first thing we want to do is come up to our effects controls. I'm going to collapse a bunch of these so only the color key effect is live for us. I'm going to take my eyedropper here and say, what color is the thing we're keying? And then we select out here. Now, nothing has changed. And that's because we need to increase our tolerance. And now suddenly this gentleman is being consumed by a, a big void back there. Now that is eating away at all of the pixels, right? Now let's go ahead, I'll come back into my project and let's bring one of our plates out. Let's just bring out, uh, let's see, what do we have here? This lovely cyberspace plate in behind. So you can really see that we're cutting holes through track two so that we can see what we're revealing on track one. So let's go back here into the color key and you can see as we increase the tolerance, we're increasing sort of how many pixels, um, how different from that initial key color are we willing to accept as something that we want to remove? Well, you can see this is really blocky. It's a little bit nasty. And that's because color key is very linear in its application of these formulas. Let's remove that color key and let's come down here, come back into our effects, Let's get that ultra key out here. We're gonna find out why it's so ultra. It's hard to appreciate how ultra it is uh, unless we've seen the alternatives. So we deploy the ultra key. It's asking us the same type of question. You know, what, what color is the thing we wanna key? So I'm gonna go ahead and click. You wanna click near your subject, something like that. We're already way out ahead of this thing, right? It's got so much going on. It's removing a lot of the stuff. I'm just gonna go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so we can really appreciate what's happening. And generally with effects, with all effects, you wanna work from the top down, from the general to the specific, as you sort of dial in everything. But thankfully, there are some setting presets. So I could say, let's have a relaxed time. And you can see that it's being very relaxed with what it thinks should be grabbed as green. And if I come in here and I say aggressive, get aggressive with it, it's being more aggressive with how much of that it is taking away. Now, all of that is just changing, dialing in these various settings down here. So I'd recommend you, you pick aggressive or relaxed or default, and we start working out from there, all right? So now it's just a matter of fine tuning this to fit with the footage itself. So we've got our color key set. Now we're gonna go into uh, matte generation. In order to dial this in, I would actually recommend that you change the output setting here from composite to alpha channel. So this is showing us just black and white information, the white areas we keep, the black areas we remove. So all of these areas that are dark will become transparent. All of these areas that are bright will become opaque. So that's what this is telling us when we change the output to alpha channel. This is helpful when figuring out our matte generation, because as you can see, when we start sliding these, what we want to find is a totally opaque person here. And we want to try to get everything around them to be totally transparent. So that's what we're gonna to try to work out through here. So maybe we have to, have to tweak this a little bit. Now this is dealing with the, the highlights and the shadows, right? So remember there was that difference between the darkest green and the blight, brightest green, lightest green, hmm. is, a, is a blight when you have unevenly lit green screen for sure. So tweaking those values, right? We're able to get those taken away. And tolerance, if you think of tolerance as how different from this green are we willing to see, are we willing to sort of attack with this? So then we have the pedestal and pedestal is sort of like racking the whole thing kind of up and down. And this is a great way you can kind of see, right, there's a little bit of gray over here. And if I sort of pedestal the other way, I can clip all of that, I can clip all of that away. I've done a great job of this, if I do say so myself. So now I'm gonna change us back to the composite. You can see we've done a, a fantastic job of chipping away a lot of that. So the next thing we wanna do is clean up. We wanna kind of clean up that mat around the outside. 
And in order to do this, let's zoom in a little bit. Let's go ahead and uh, maybe move from fit to say 200%, we'll get a little bit close. And you can see that the edge around this gentleman here is a little bit choppy, right? It's a, it's a bit of a choppy edge. So we may want to soften that, maybe we'll, we'll make that a little bit soft, and maybe we want to kind of choke in and out. As you can see, that's kind of chewing into the person a little bit. And let's see, maybe I'll just hit the reset here. Maybe we'll go, go to a value like, uh, like 10, something like that. Now things like contrast and midpoint, you can see with contrast, the edge gets a lot harder. So you may wanna dial that in if you want a harder edge. Um, this gentleman, like myself, is a bald and therefore does not have a lot of hair troubles to deal with, but those gray, gray values in between are what are gonna give you a lot of trouble in there. So uh, maybe dial the midpoint in, so pushing, you know, which way between totally black and totally white, where is the midpoint of that? So it's all about refining the edge with the matte cleanup. Then we get into spill suppression, which is what do we do with the green parts here? What do we do? Like you can see right here on this, this fella's cheek, right? Oh, some green spilling on them. So that's when we would be desaturating an amount of this and how far and how much it's all gonna be dealt with here in the uh, in the wonderful spill suppression. <laughs> and then we're gonna we come into color correction and these are basic color correction controls that will we'll modify uh, the, the footage of this, this gentleman here. Now, I have found that generally with ultra key, you can just come into the settings and pick aggressive and it works pretty well. Um, does a pretty good job at aggressive. And you see that that dials in all of these numbers to specific levels. One thing that I will point your attention to, and I, I would like you to kind of look at, if your subject isn't moving around a lot and they're pretty locked in here, I want you to come up to motion and I want you to, sorry, not motion, opacity, dial into opacity, grab the free draw bezier and just go ahead and <laughs> with this fella, you want to come into your pen tool and we are just going to use sort of a masking tool here to clip them out. We're just gonna put a mask that's fairly close to our subject so that we don't even have to worry about any of the pixels that are towards the outside of the frame. And I'll just extend these dots a little bit beyond here like this, and maybe I'll add a dot and move it out like that. But this means that we don't even have to worry about the, the things that are on the outside uh, of the frame. So if I take away that ultra key, right, I'm clipping away, I'm, I'm performing a little bit of a garbage mat uh, in there. And as long as our subject never bumps into the edge of this, we're never gonna notice. But this means we have fewer pixels from light to dark to worry about when we're keying. <laughs> yeah, this mat, total garbage, which is a good thing in this case. Uh, <laughs> and you're right, Robert, it's not the most complex thing to write to light for green screen, but it is critical, we want that high attention to detail. Always check your scopes, check your monitors. And if anyone's never done it for the first time, you know, just make sure, make sure that spill is not so bad. So garbage mat, we use the ultra key to make the rest of the green go away. Pretty good, I would say pretty good. But one thing that is really critical, right? When we look at this type of thing, this gentleman was filmed on a green screen with the purpose of lighting the green screen and themselves, such that we can extract our subject from it, right? It was not lit to account for the environment of blues and pinks that are whizzing by them here, right? So it doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem correct that this person is really living inside a computer, um, much like I do, I can tell you from first-hand experience, there's a lot of different diodes and lights happening in there. So if on set, for example, you can't be sort of bathing this person in like a gel, right? If there was a colored light that was hitting them with blue light from this side and nice pink light from this side, that would help to sell this illusion pretty well, right? That they are here in some kind of digital space. For us, we want to fake it in post. Fix it in post, if you will. Well, let's just say we're we're gonna we're gonna fix it here. <laughs> Dare matrix, <laughs> absolutely. So well, that would be all green. We'd need green lighting in here. 
So there's many effects that we might use to do this uh, in our sort of video effects bin. We might come into video effects and we might find for ourselves uh, things in the color correction uh, or image control, right, space. Uh, but what I actually would like to do is to make use of the Lumetri color or Lumetri color. I've never learned how to pronounce this. So Lumetri color, and we're going to apply that onto here. Now, this is generally the effect that we are going to be using when we go ahead and color correct things. So if we come into our workspace here and we were to switch into color mode, right? This is our Lumetri color, uh, color controls right over here. And what I'm interested in doing is actually coming down to the color wheels and match. And I'm going to say comparison view. And we're just going to go ahead and say apply match. So what this has done is it is comparing our footage to the footage with the background. And so if I just, let's just go ahead and remove comparison view here. And with Lumetri color, toggle that off and on, you can see as I toggle it, toggle it off, they have this kind of green cast a little bit on them, toggle it on, and it's tried to match, it's tried to match the lighting situation of the person plus the background. This is, I'll say, a little bit of a dirty hack uh, with getting this color match to match to something that isn't real. Usually you would be color matching between this footage and that footage, right? Shot A earlier in the sequence, shot B later in the sequence, or this was shot in the morning, most things were shot in the afternoon, therefore I need to match the lighting between them. So we'd be using color match in those ways. This allows us to color match to something artificial and therefore bathe this person in these blues here. You can see how the shadows, highlights, and midtones have been pushed just a little bit into the blues, highlights up into the reds, right? Because there are these red highlights. And that's really done a good job of getting this person mostly, right? Mostly in the way that we want. Um, so with all that in mind, how kind of not terribly difficult it is, let's see how we apply this to some more clips so they can kind of run through the process again. <laughs> You're solid for sending us your stuff on the Discord. That's where we want to see your shots. Either make use of the, of the materials we provided or shoot your own, grab your own stuff from Adobe Stock. That would be fantastic. We'd love to see, love to see what you do, what you make on your own accord. That's what I want to see. We are going to be reviewing them uh, at the end of next week. So send me all this stuff. We want to see them. We've got a rich full week of video things coming to us. So re let's repeat the process a little bit, right? We come into our plates find our subject, right? Let's go with, well, it's gonna show this one, but this is mostly a, an illustration of why blue, light blue is not particularly correct. But let's go with this person here because they have this, this hair that we wanna see how that's gonna operate, right? So we're gonna drag this again onto our new sequence. We wanna make sure that they are on layer two, right? We wanna see how much they move around. You can see their shadow being cast over here. That's something we want to try to get rid of using the old garbage mat. So of course we come up to effects controls. We come into opacity. We come and grab our pen tool. And with our pen tool, we are gonna click, we're gonna click in here. We're gonna just make a little bit of a garbage mat, keeping in mind how far they travel, how far they're walking around as they move through the shot here. We'll just drag that down to the bottom so we get the top and bottom of the frame. And we are considering, let's see, let's just kind of scrub through like this. You may want to, you may wish to consider animating this path, which you can do. So let's say we scrub to this part here. Let's see, where do they, oh yeah, they're gonna bump out of frame. So I'm going to click on the stopwatch for the path. I'm gonna scrub ahead here. And let's just make sure that we have that selected. I want to get our path, mask path, grab our tool, ah, not like that. Grabbing the path, grabbing the mask, grabbing the points, moving the points, creating new keyframes for those wonderful points like so. 
and then it'll animate sort of in between. So if you need to get things, get things exactly where you want them, animate the mask, and we're trying to get rid of those pixels that we don't really want to mess with. And then, like we say, we come into effects. We want to find for ourselves the ultra key. We drag that ultra, the ultimate key experience onto here. Now we're going to pick color close to our subject right in here. They need some kind of background, right? We need to get some kind of background behind them. So let's get a wonderful plate back there. Let's see, what do we think? Something like, there we go. Pew, 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 pew. pew. Really blasting, blasting off with this. That's great. I'm gonna return to our effects controls. And then let's go with aggressive again. See how well that does. You can sort of see this hard line that's happening along this sleeve, hopefully. Hopefully that's showing up for you. So that's when you'd probably wanna come in and deal with our matte generation, right? We might uh, come into our matte cleanup and say soften it a little bit more, give us a little bit of a softer edge to those things. I've done a pretty good job on the hair here. And as you can see, we can scrub through. Looks like it's doing pretty well, I would say. So once you've got everything cleaned up to your heart's content, right? Let's see, well, what else would we like to do here? Maybe we wanna, uh, midpoint's looking pretty good. Maybe the contrast should come down. Maybe we can soften that a little bit more. If there's really bright light sort of behind the subject or there's meant to be, there should be a bit of a haloing effect happening around them, right? That's definitely something that we wanna consider. You can see some of their shadow here, so we should probably Maybe try to pedestal that away a little bit like that. That's working pretty well. But maybe we want to come into the shadow because it is their shadow that's uh, that's clipping us. So we'll bring that value down. That's got it. We got that figured out. We got that, that little problem nipped. And then of course, come into our Lumetri color, come down to color wheels and match, select comparison view, and we'll just kind of pick Let's pick a point that's gonna be pretty good for us. Let's go with here. We're gonna say apply match. And you can see that the tone has changed. I'll take us out of comparison view. And you can see before, after, before, after. Wonderful stuff. So these types of little things, you can see that the mid-tones have really been pushed. We might even drag those back a little bit manually or uh, bring our highlights around. You might wanna modify this stuff. We can lean on this to get us close, and then it's just a little matter of fiddling stuff, getting it exactly where you want. So with all of that in mind, I hope that you've enjoyed learning a little bit about green screening, chroma keying, getting all of this stuff to uh, <laughs> be a little bit more transparent and less opaque for you. Really save that pun in the reserve uh, to deliver here towards the end. So hopefully this has been good. Now, this is, of course, just an intro to chroma keying. There's no end to the depth that we can explore when it comes to chroma keying, when it comes to compositing like this. Uh, if you have trouble chroma keying and getting clean keys in Premiere, I would recommend taking that clip over into After Effects. There are a lot of resources that will lead you into doing good, more detailed chroma keying work inside of After Effects. But for a lot of things, if your screen is well lit and your subject is well lit, this is gonna get you specifically close enough. We'll say it's close enough. And if you're delivering quickly on social, this has to go bounce it back onto Instagram, back onto TikTok, back onto some stories and reels. This will probably be good enough, right? This will be good enough for delivery. So hopefully that will get you there. This is the quickest version. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Maybe it'll open up some creative ideas for you. Now, as I say, as you explore those creative ideas, we want to see them, send them to us on Discord. And of course, I want to see you back here tomorrow. I'm back with more video stuff throughout this whole week and through all of next week. So please, please, please come back here. Come back and spend some time with me. Do these challenges. Push yourself. Challenge yourself with these skills. It's a new year. It's a good time to, to learn some new things and to, uh, I don't know, expand your repertoire into uh, the strange and fantastic as it comes to compositing. All right, that'll do it for me. I'm Evan Abrams for Adobe Live. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for hanging out. And I will see you around the internet. All right, bye for now.